Okay, well, welcome everyone to our, um, turn my camera on for just a second. Hey, it's Red Thursday, by the way. I just now was able to uh, get our class together for our first meeting. I apologize, it has been a rough semester, without doubt. Um, but I'm glad to be able to get together for this internet of things and got some good news is, and one of them is, um, this afternoon, as soon as class is over here, I will be creating the Connecting Things course. So you've been in the introduction uh, to the Internet of Things, the IoT uh, intro class. The next portion of our course is the IoT Connecting Things, and I will have that class up and running for you um, shortly, and uh, actually later today. I just uh, They just had to fix my account and get me accredited for it, so I am accredited now and, and can do that for you. A um, couple things of the reasons why I even taught this course and one of the reasons I thought about and wanted to, to have this course. The biggest one is, where do we go from here now that we only have three courses in the CCNA versus four courses? And there's, there's a lot of different ways to look at this. And one of them obviously is to, to use this internet of things um, coursework as a fourth course. So in other words, take the internet, introduction to internet of things and take the connecting things course and maybe add in some other little items I'm going to share with you today um, to give us a fourth course that would be an internet of things course. Now that is one option. I will tell you that recently we have been told and have been informed that the CCMP enterprise core class is going to probably be out in early July. So maybe you know, don't quote me completely on that, but mid summer. So, there's another option. The only problem with that is this. The CCMP offerings are not like our current classes. They are not a curriculum that's online that you can give to your students. Our CCMP offerings are you buy the CCMP book, the book is the curriculum, and then there are labs and some quizzes and tests to go with that. So a lot of people don't want to use the CCMP simply because it's not a fully fleshed out item. The other item coming down the pipe that could become your fourth class is CCNA DevNet. Now we do not have any um, actual time frame for when this will be out. Um, obviously, the exam is already out, so um, I would say that you know in the next. Again, do not quote me on this because I cannot say for certain, but I would say midsummer. I, I expect to see the CCNA DevNet um, course come out. Uh, and that would be a, another option. So really kind of what we're looking at here. Um, and there's a fourth option. And this is one that many people are considering, especially in the state of North Carolina. Um, and I don't know why that did that. It shouldn't have. But, um, oh, come on now. Thought I'd had that problem fixed, but evidently I didn't. Um, My monitor is not behaving. I'm gonna try doing something different here. Come on. So a couple options. Again, I want to just kind of throw these out here just so we have them. Um, one would be, you know, IoT fundamentals. And IoT connecting things, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put in here. Um, also, I've got this 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 kit that I've found. Actually, Ken Kwame from uh, North Dakota helped me told me about it. It's a free Nove kit that you can purchase, and I'm gonna show it to you here in just a minute. That gives you uh, like 50 something extra labs that can be done um, that are Arduino based labs. Um, um, so, kind of. That's one option for your fourth class. We've got the CCMP Enterprise Core. Again, the problem is this is a cut down class. It's not a full class. You've got CCNA DevNet, which is going to be a full class. That will be a full class, and it will be out sometime, like I said, I'd say midsummer. And then your fourth option is something we're actually investigating, and that is nothing. Now, I know that sounds crazy, but uh, hear me out on this. In the state of North Carolina, 
many of our two-year degree uh, programs, especially in networking, have ballooned up to about 70-hour um, curriculums. In other words, 70 hours were the courses that you need to complete over two years. If you add in any developmental classes at all for a student, it is nearly impossible for a student to complete a two-year degree program in two years. So there's been some discussion that we will simply drop the fourth class completely. Now, I'm going to tell you, if Cisco hears me saying this, and I'm going to say it next week at our meeting, they'll hate me, but I don't care because you got to do what's best for our students. Um, and if we determine that best for our students to drop our degree program from a 70 hour to a 67 hour program, so that they can then do their developmental class or classes that they need and still finish in two years, then that's the decision we need to make. Now, that decision has to be made on an individual basis at every single school. Um, but that's, the, I just want to throw it out there because that is something that's being discussed. Um, in pretty, pretty, pretty seriously by, by many schools. Um, I will tell you, obviously I'm teaching this IOT class because I do think we need to get our students introduced to IOT uh, in some form or fashion. Um, talking with Ken uh, Kwame again up in uh, North Dakota and you know, we're talking about the, the, the gas and oil industry and talking about what he's talking about with them especially in their area about how much IOT is a big deal for them and about how everything we're reading and seeing is that IOT is obviously going to be the wave of the future, which, you know, all you got to do is ask yourself, how many IOT devices do you have in your house right now versus how many you had five years ago? Uh, and I think you're going to, you know, just think about that, you know, how many you've got versus then and how many more you could see coming in. Um, you know, I've got two Nest thermostats. I've got, uh, a blink system. Um, I've got um, I've got several Google Home devices, several um, one Alexa. So you know I've got a lot of different IoT devices in the house. So those items are going to be more and more important as we continue to move forward. So um, either one of you have any opinion or any you know what things you would consider um, as we look at these different options. I would say, okay, no, no opinions. We, we're in the process of trying to decide what to do with that fourth class. And right now, uh, we debating on doing nothing. Right. And, and the other option was use it as a, a troubleshooting class where right. we try to basically use a big review, a boot camp type of sorts to go through it, everything they've done, um, put it more in their hands, getting them ready for certification. But right now we haven't decided totally what we're gonna do. Okay. In the state of North Carolina, our networking programs all have a, a capstone class already. They have a, what's called a net 289 class, which is a, which is a capstone. And that class is kind of what you're all, what you're suggesting. So we already have that as part of the curriculum um, and we would not be getting rid of that class. So, but that may be a you know, good option. Um, I will say one of the cool things that I think you've noticed, even this IoT fundamentals class, when we start looking at what's in it, you could easily throw this 15 hour class, 15, 20 hours into, a, into that capstone and have them do some things and just learn a little bit about IoT. Even if you don't use our next class with just connecting things, um, I think it's possible for you to use this and, and, and be, um, at least get them introduced to the IoT world. Um, I do think we need to do that. I think one of my issues when I looked at this as an option, um, this to me is more of the same. Okay, so this to me is, I just continue to give them more networking items above CCNA, but not really anything that broadens their range of knowledge. Um, that, there is one other one that I hadn't, if you're not already teaching it, um, then CyberOps is an option. Um, but many people are already teaching cyber ops in their networking program. So I don't necessarily put that down as a, as a, uh, an option simply because many of our schools are using that already in North Carolina. Now, if you're not, if you're not in North Carolina and you're not using cyber ops, that is a very good way to go. Because again, 
you're not giving them more of the same. You're not giving them more of the CCMP, which is just, and again, I don't mean to say it's more of the same, but it is. It's more of the networking, whereas this would introduce them to how to become a level one security operations center uh, analyst. So a SOC level one. So this, the jury's out on, I don't know yet. I don't know about DevNet because I'll be up front with you. I'm not a programmer. Uh, I'm working on it. Uh, I'm actually taking a, the Python, going through the Python class right now um, in uh, Netacad, but I'm not a programmer. So I don't even know if this will be in my ballpark to teach quite honestly, um, because I'm not a programmer. Uh, if it's more towards software defined networking and Cisco DNA center and how to roll out SDN. Yes, I can do this. If it's, you know, if this is programming, I'm out, you know, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to be a programmer. Um, I, I'm fine learning how to do Python and basic scripting, but you know, that's, that's not really my, my cup of tea. Um, for other folks, it may be different. So just your mileage may vary on that one. So, all right, any questions before I get this started? I just want to kind of go through a couple of things here with this IoT, the fundamentals class. First off, I do want to let you know that when I did this course, I did not um, create a, under the modules, I didn't put all of the uh, assignments in here. All the assignments are just uploads that are under the assignments item. So I just put all the different assignments here. Um, if you decide you want to teach this, and you want to move them out to the modules, all you have to do is go in here and do a plus. You can just put the assignments. So you can actually just click on the first and go all the way down to, you know, hit here and then click add item. And you'll see they all show up underneath here. So you could build out a, um, a um, format just like I have in my other classes. For what we're doing in this class, I didn't do that. I just made you the assignments and then you're, you can place them under the modules if you want. Now, they, that doesn't remove them from here. That just puts them into the modules areas. So if you're confused by that or have been confused, I apologize. I don't have links to the lab. So when it says lab 1112, you have to actually go into the module itself. Okay, so you go and you're gonna read chapter one and lab 1112, you're gonna to have to go to wherever that is in the curriculum. And obviously you can click on course index, go to lab index, go to lab 1112 and you can do that. Now, um, again, as long as you do about 80% of these, I'm not gonna not gonna get in too big of a, uh, of a hissy about you not getting them turned in. But I just wanted to see, let you see all that's available so that we can uh, look at all that we have. Now this, this class is um, pretty involved, even to be a little you know, low end class. Um, you know, we've got some of the things that we learned that one of the things we don't have to worry as much about is with this class is it teaches you how to use packet tracer. It gives you just a little um, basics on how to use packet tracer. Um, I do want you to know that if you need a uh, intro to packet tracer class, you can always just create a class, put your students in it. Or if for some reason you don't want to do that, I do have available uh, underneath Stanley Community College under our IT Academy. I've started a thing that I call the Open Community College, kind of completely ripping off the Open University, but free classes and I've got a packet tracer class that any student can sign into and log into. It's, it's not monitored, it's just the free intro to packet tracer class. And I've also got a free intro to cybersecurity class that if anybody wants to, to jump into this 10 hour uh, intro to packet tracer or vice versa. So if you don't want to create your own class and put your students in, feel free to put them in this free IT Academy class. Again, uh, Stanley Community College. Just go to Stanley, future students, IT Academy, and then go down to free classes and that's available. I am going to actually have a cybersecurity essentials down here shortly um, that will be available for free too for anybody that wants to, uh, to take a peek at that. Okay, um, so again, we don't have to worry about intro to packet tracer. We already know about it, but students who are just getting into this won't know. I do think it's important for you to work through, and we know LANs, WANs, all that, but it's very important for you to work through, um, once we get into the IoT section, and we're looking at what an actuator is, um, we're looking at different things as far as uh, sensors, all of that's gonna be covered here and in connecting. 
But when we look at the lab, as we get further in here, we get a controller, sensors, and actuators, which you know, actuators, one of the things you'll learn as you we move into the connecting, an actuator can be a, a pneumatic, hydraulic, or electric actuator that moves um, some type of um, item. And fog computing is when we're doing the computing out at the edge, instead of having it come back into the, the cloud itself, it's being done at the edge closer to our sensors and our controllers so that the decisions can be made faster. Um, that's what is meant by fog computing. But here's a really neat thing, and I've got it actually pulled up in uh, the lab itself. But this is some of the features they've added to Packet Tracer now, to where they have a home gateway controlling solar cells, they have batteries, they have, it's, it's really, really cool. So you can go in here and I can do, uh, this was 192.168.25.1 uh, admin. By the way, they do not do a very good job with security because the username is admin and the password is admin. All right. But you can see here all the different smart items. So there's a smart door. So you can lock the door. You can unlock the door. And it actually will affect the door itself. So if I lock it, see the door's locked. Unlock the door. We can go into the coffee maker, turn it on and off. All right, we can do the lamp. Well, let's see where my lamp's at, smart lamp, which I will tell you uh, quite honestly, and, and this sounds terrible folks, but I have become stupid lazy. Um, I have the lights in my living room and both of the lights that are beside the bed in our bedroom are hooked up. They're the uh, Phillips Hughes lights. And I have them hooked into Google Home so I can just say, okay, Google, turn on living room lights and the living room lights come on. Um, I'll find myself at a hotel somewhere if I'm staying at a hotel going, you mean I got to get up, and turn the light on? This is ridiculous. Um, but it's kind of cool because we've actually, we're in that Star Trek world now to where we're talking to our homes uh, and we're telling them what to do. Um, so it is kind of neat to, to see these things and to see what we can do. Um, it's also very neat to be able to go in remotely if I'm not at home and turn lights on to make it look like the house is already on or to set up a, you know, an if then, then if, if this, then that, I have T, 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 T. Um, so it says if I'm X amount of distance away from the house, turn on this particular device or whatever. Um, now, having said all that, it's also very scary because I do know that that means my house is a target. Um, at the same time, um, we all carry a cell phone with us and they're listening to everything we do. And believe it or not, they're track. Well, we all know they're tracking everything we do. Um, so we're giving up some of the privacy for convenience. And I think that's probably a, uh, probably a good thing too. Sorry, John, I just saw you talk about maybe doing for your fourth class, the RHCE class or going to Ansible. Um, that, that's a possibility. That's, that's something too. You could add another Linux class. You're not going to, probably not going to go wrong teaching people more Linux. That's for sure. Um, but this is neat in Packet Tracer because you've got all these new added features. You've also got, as we move forward, I'll, uh, I'll open up another packet tracer and we can look at how to do, uh, how to do some um, items with an a onboard. Um, I got to go in here and hit, oops, oops, sorry. Onboard, uh, what's in our, basically an Arduino. So that's what this gets into, showing you all the different things that you can do. Um, and we have, we have a packet tracer we're adding. Uh, this is that the packet tracer you add in the uh, smart um, sprinkler. Which think about that. If you can set up a sprinkler that has a sensor on it that looks at the moisture level of the soil and then it will only sprinkle when it's really needed um, and the amount of water that could save, or we'll look at the temperature and we'll not turn the sprinklers on if it's a certain temperature so that you don't have as much. Um, as much of the uh, the water you're actually putting in the atmosphere, you know, evaporating, evaporating. So all kinds of different things here that are really neat. Looking at that, um, as we look at this, one of the things I will tell you is that um, you will probably want to learn that rectangles represent actions and that these uh, diamonds represent decision points in a flow chart. I just say I've seen that somewhere. Um, that you may want to know about down the road. 
Um, the other thing that we were looking at here, looking at variables, global variables, and looking at basic programming, they're just letting you learn some of the basics of programming so that when you see some of the Blockly programs are going to have inside of the, uh, the class, you're not really kind of getting uh, sideswiped by it. Um, so here's Blockly, and this is just, this is like any of the um, drag and drop programming languages that are out there. Um, Blockly, uh, somebody help me out here. What's the other one? The one that's so common. Um, oh, God. Well, you know, there's other ones out there. The Blockly is one that we've used. Um, really, what Blockly is doing for our particular setups is creating a, um, we're actually creating a, um, Python. So here, I'm going to show you something. This is actually from our connecting class. And this is what you'll be working on if you do uh, purchase, by the way. And I want to show you, I mentioned this in our, in one of our class, but this is a Canna kit. And it is Canna kit, Raspberry Pi kit, quick start guide. This is, consists of a kit that has all kind of stuff in it. A little hard to see here. And actually, I did a little video on it for you, but here's the actually the board and the, some things I've been playing with today connected. But this is a uh, Blockly program that when you do the Blockly, it actually creates a Python script. And this script simply blinks an LED. And you see, hopefully you can see the LED blinking there. There it is. I know it's simple, but uh, you'd be amazed at how dumb I am. I put the LED in backwards uh, and it, you wouldn't believe how long it took me to figure out that um, item there. Um, but not being somebody who is uh, knows a great deal about electronics, and you guys are probably laughing at me, but the, this chart here they give you on how to know what a resistor is in terms of, you know, orange, orange, black, uh, or orange, orange, brown. You know, that's a 330 ohm resistor. Uh, and red, red, black, or red, red, brown is a 220 ohm resistor. Those types of things are things that networking people don't know about, um, but something we need to learn about if we are going to spend time working with IoT. The other thing I'll tell you, now the can of kit's a hundred bucks. So if you go to buy it, um, you can go out there and buy it. And the listing for this course, if you go look at the uh, information on it, it will show you um, the kit and what to get. Talking with, um, Ken Kwame out of uh, North Dakota. And Qu Ken, I hope I'm saying your name right. Maybe Ken Kwame, but I've, I've heard people say Ken Kwame too. But so Ken Kwame, Kwame. He put me on to this free Nove kit. Now this kit is a $35 kit. And I'll, I'll warn you, when you open it up, you'll never get it all back in here and get it right again. But you can <laughs> see it's stacked full of stuff. All right. In fact, I want to show you I go to the free Nove site, freenove.com. I'm going to show you the eBay store because I bought mine off Amazon, but you can't get it off Amazon anymore, unfortunately, uh, right now. The only place you can get it is on the eBay store, and it does take a couple weeks for it to get to you um, because it's shipping straight out of China. So you may want to spray it with disinfectant when you get it. Um, but here is the Arduino, and the reason Ken said to go with Arduino is because that's more like the devices being used in the gas and oil industry. So I was like, well, that makes sense to me. So look at all these different items you've got here. You've got uh, 220K resistors, 10K and 1K resistors. Here's our Arduino board. It's an Arduino clone board that comes with it. You get your power supply. You get all kind of connectors. You get your breadboard. You get a... Uh, touchpad, get some boards to access solder, solder boards so you can actually solder in components if you want to. You get even a, um, an LED, or excuse me, LCD um, display. You get a couple push buttons, you get a couple um, uh, resistors, you get a motor, you get a, all kinds of stuff. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. But even better, one of the great things they have is that under tutorial, this kit is the FNK0017 kit. So it's this kit right here. You can download for this kit a full set of tutorials. 
these tutorials are excellent. Okay, so when I go in here and I open this up the tutorial, hey Tim, when I open up the tutorial here, I'm gonna pull this over here. Okay, so here's the tutorial for the uh, the free Nova kit that I was showing you. And again, like I said, this is it's 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 pretty impressive. Uh, I've done many of the labs and started playing with the labs and. Like I said, this is a free Nova kit, 35 bucks, 36 bucks, 35.99. Um, but this kit has in it all the stuff to do. I'm going to just do one page, one full page. All of these different labs. So blinking an LED, just like we just did. There's a simple lab here. And here's the cool thing. It, it tells you about circuit knowledge, it tells you about power supplies and tells you about um, you know, voltage and current. Um, it get talked about series and parallel. Uh, now we'll tell you some of this is written in a little bit of English. So you have to, you can, it makes sense, but you sometimes have to go get translated a little bit. Um, but this lab right here is exactly pretty much what you're doing in the, um, the, the, the live using the Canna kit in a kit that's 35, 36 bucks instead of $100. So for the cost of one Canna kit, you can get three of these kits for your students. Um, we have considered just having our students buy their own kits. The problem is, again, it's taking about two weeks for those to be shipped in now, right now. So um, that's a little bit of a problem, obviously. But this, take a peek here. Uh, you're blinking LEDs, blinking two LEDs. Uh, digital display. So here you can actually set up and use, it uses a digital display to show um, different items on it using, and here's your, your code, your Python code, your sketch code, but it's basically a Python type language that, that you use. And it will go through the different digits and it shows you how to connect it, you know, how to, how to put everything together. And, you know, they get fairly complicated fairly quickly, but that's also when it's further down the line here. If you look at something like an LCD clock, this is how to build an LCD clock. It shows you how to hook up all of your different um, connections, you know, where to put your GPIO input outputs. And it, here's, it gives you your, your, uh, your um, coding to put in. And by the way, you don't have to type these in because inside of here, uh, the sketches are all in here. So if you don't want to type anything in, you can just open these up and just bring these straight in to the Arduino. So we've got in our in our class and in the connecting things, you've got this um, you know this Canna kit and you got this PL app. Which by the way, uh, one of the things I'll teach you as we go through looking at this PL app inside of the the class. So one of the things it has is you know we were using First, we're using Python or Packet Tracer to do Blockly. And then as you move on through the class and get into here, there's actually a, a lab to where you can set up the PL app with a Raspberry Pi. I need to warn you here. You need to watch this video because this video at 435 will show you that you're probably gonna get an error message and how to fix that error message. This is not covered in the lab if you just use the, the lab material in terms of the written material. This goes in and says, uh, okay, if you get this little error message here, guess what? Just ignore this and click okay and everything will work. If you don't know that, you will spend large amounts of times like Kelly trying to fix an error that's really not an error. Um, so what's the video before you do our do the lab Two 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 five. If you've already done the lab and you, you have this kit, I apologize ahead of time. Um, if you have a Raspberry Pi, by the way, any Raspberry Pi, it should work with this PL app. It's not a special Raspberry Pi that you have to use. I will tell you though, you have to have your, the Raspberry Pi and the PC you're trying to connect to it have to be on the same layer two network. So um, you can't be on, it can't be on wireless and you be on your wired network in your office and you try to connect to it. So for me in my office, as I showed in the video I sent out the day before yesterday, I have it connected to the same physical network as my office PC. Uh, in fact, I've got a little switch in my office. So but be aware of that. This 
um, sets you up so that what you can do, as I mentioned inside of our, uh, inside of our um, class, is you can access the Raspberry Pi remotely without having to actually connect a um, monitor or a keyboard or mouse or anything. It just lets you access it so you can do, um, can do things remotely. So, so that is looking at one of the apps and this is, this is again that the one I just showed you where you just had a, a single LED, single resistor, and then you can connect it and download the Blockly app that will cause the, um, the item to, to, to blink. So, and then we've got multiple app things in here. Now these are optional. So if you don't have uh, the Canna kit, you won't be able to do this. Um, I do suggest you get you a Raspberry Pi and try these labs. Um, you really don't need a whole lot to do them. Again, this first lab, all you need uh, is, quite honestly, a Raspberry Pi, the PL app, and so this is exactly the same thing. You need a Raspberry Pi, uh, a 330 ohm resistor, two jumper wires, and, a and that's it. And so this lab 227 in our intro class is really the same lab as 32511 three, in our connecting class that you will see. So. But one of the things I like about this is it's getting students to see how a network device is controlling the physical world. And so we can actually show that. So again, Freenove, uh, I can't say enough good things about these cheap little kits. I've got two of them. Uh, in fact, if you come next week, it looks like now I'm gonna be uh, covering for um, Echo. She's not gonna travel in for our event, uh, but I'm gonna bring two of these at least I don't think I get my hands on any more before then, um, but I'll bring in some of these and we'll play with them at the uh, at the event uh, next week as we look, especially my IoT presentation that I'm doing on Thursday and Friday at the NCCIA. So I'll be bringing those in for you. And by the way, right now I am having my event next week, uh, unless the state of North Carolina puts out a do not travel, do not meet, uh, Mandate, uh, I will be having my event next week. So, any questions so far? Impressions of this particular course, this particular Internet, internet of uh, Things course? I think most of you are about done with it. And I told Tim, I told them earlier, I will be creating your. Uh, I'll actually be creating the connecting class as soon as we get done with this meeting and sending everybody um, sending everybody their code to get in. Just real quick, I will show you this. Once you get the PIL app loaded and get your Raspberry Pi from the Canna kit on your network, your local network, you will see it show up here and you can connect to it. And when you do, you'll log in. I've already logged in, so that's why it's giving me that. Um, otherwise it would have done this right here and I clicked on the PL app. So let me find the PL app here. Click connect. It gives me a login. I'm already logged in. So it's just taking me straight to it. But. Okay. So again, here's all the different notebook zip files we can do in those things for connecting things. So this kind of kit, is what's mentioned inside of the materials. And if you want to make life the easiest on yourself, then you will use the Canna kit and because that's what the labs are written to. Uh, if you're more of a, let's get out on the edge, save some money, then you may want to look at this free Nove, or you can always build your own kits too. Uh, that's one of the things that, that I want you to be aware of. You know, all the components that are in this kit you know, every single one of these components can be purchased uh, outside of the kit. Um, you may not be able to get it for $35 uh, or $36, but um, you might could, depending on how you, how you, where you spec it out from and where you buy it from. Um, but this little kit, like I said, uh, I, I've been impressed with it for what, it, for what it's doing. Any questions?
Sorry, man. That was Brandon wanting something, so. Um, any questions? All right, I'm going to, let's see what we got here. We got a chat here. Labs and Kinect, I'll be done with Pi. Yep, we have quite a few of those, not so much of Arduino. Yes, John, the, the labs and the connecting can be done with a Raspberry Pi. In fact, they're, they're built mainly around a Raspberry Pi. So um, I would say that you could just use the Raspberry Pis you already have, uh, connect them to the PL app. You may want to, uh, the only thing about the PL app is it does require a special version of the Raspberry Pi software, which you can you download when you create and use the, the, the PL app. So if you walk through, again, watch that video first, watch the video and then walk through the lab, it'll reformat your card with the special version of Raspberry Pi to be used for the labs. That way it'll have the Blockly and it'll have everything that you need uh, when you connect into the Raspberry Pi, it will already be there. Okay. So like I said, we got this, the dashboard and those things here. We've got, this is showing you, that's your wireless configuration. That's the name I gave it. And it just gives you what the image is. So this is just a PL app image so that you can connect remotely to uh, your Raspberry Pi. So you'll want to change out the, uh, the Raspberry Pi image that's on your Pi's. Just reformat the cards and use the one that's uh, available for the PL app. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. I'm going to stop my share. Any other questions about um, the intro to the internet? of things class, because like I said, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. A little bit of Python. I will say one of the neat things about this, if you don't load Python locally, um, you've got the, uh, don't forget that one of the labs is loading this IoT, um, this IoT um, VM that you've got. And so this VM has uh, Python already on it. So you can just, use it to do any of the Python labs that are inside of the class itself. Um, and I'm not sharing, so like I do, because I'm sitting here showing you stuff. And I, hold on one second, and I'll start sharing again. So here I am booting up the CentOS machine that is part of the, one of the labs that have you load VirtualBox and have you load this. So this will keep you from having to load in your machines, in your uh, uh, lab, the um, let me get out here. Python, because it's already there. Okay. Come on now. So you got Python 275 in here. So not the greatest version, but it is a version of Python that you can work with. Um, so it is available and that makes, makes it a little bit easier on you. Or you can just do what I've done, which is just go and download Python. Let me get out of this machine here, hold on. There. Nope. Get out of the machine. I'll get out of it. I'll shut it down. <laughs> but you also can just load. I've got idle on mine, Python 3.7. So I've got it loaded just on my local machine, so it's pretty easy to go get. If you don't want to, um, if you don't want to do the, the the Python programming inside of that virtual machine, just load Python on your local machine. So but it's all just basic little Python things. The negative there is you don't have the documents, some of the documents that are in there, some of the the others, but these are just basic basic items: converting integers, converting uh, printing strings, those types of things. Um, so very, very simple introduction to it. 
I've got idle three, so you can do idle three or Python three. That should also be in there, so. All right, well, I'm going to close idle. And we'll stop sharing my screen. And we'll stop recording.